Welcome back to Who Gets Your Vote. Louisiana's congressional map recently changed, and that could shake things up on who has the majority in the House. Here's a look at the map. This is the sixth congressional district, stretches from Shreveport through Natchitoches and Alexandria, all the way down to Baton Rouge. Now you may be wondering, why this district just cuts through the middle of the state. Well, a federal judge ordered legislators to redraw the map, adding a second minority majority district since one third of the state's population is black. After several legal challenges, the map was upheld. Here's a look at the candidates. Four Democrats, Quentin Anthony Anderson, Peter Williams, Wilkin Jones Jr., and former Congressman Cleo Fields, as well as one Republican, Albert Guillory. Now we reached out to all of the candidates, but only a few of them agreed to talk to us on camera. Here's what they had to say about representing such a wide swath of the state. You know, I can't do anything about where I'm from, uh, but what I can do is throughout this process, demonstrate my respect for the people, for the regions. Uh, the fact that I've canvassed in all 10 parishes, I've been available, I've been accessible, and I wanna continue that. Uh, I think that one of the characteristics, if I do get uh, the chance to get elected, one of the characteristics of my, my tenure, uh, I'd, I'd like to be the fact that you see me all the time, that we have town halls on a regular basis. You know, there are 10 parishes in this district. I'd like to have at least 10 uh, town halls every year. Well, remember that I'm a country boy. I'm from that part of Louisiana that's accustomed to being stepped over, disregarded, pushed aside. So I know how it feels. And because of that, if you look at my record as a state senator, I took care of all of those communities, the big ones and the little ones. No one was, was forgotten about, pushed aside. And that's what I will do again. Uh, no, New Orleans, uh, excuse me, Baton Rouge will not uh, be the leader of my district. The whole district will be farmers. Uh, need to be protected. Our food sources need to be protected. How do you tackle being able to represent everyone appropriately? Because I can tell you, Shreveport has completely different values than Baton Rouge. Right. Well, the values that's important is the ones that the folks who have been left out from the middle class on down. We have a lot of rural parishes that surround these uh, metropolitan areas. So to handle the uh, represent them, I would oppose, uh, have a uh, more or less a satellite uh, office in each uh, parish or each district area to serve as the people. Well, the district could be short-lived, but it could also have major implications when it comes to the majorities in the House of Representatives. Joining me now is Shreveport Attorney Royal Alexander with more on the Congressional 6th race. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. So big implications. Let's start off. The district was redrawn, went through the court system, it's in place now, but it could be short-lived. What, what do you think is going to happen? It is slowly going to work its way up the court system from federal district court, where the trial was held, as you recall, in downtown Shreveport, to the U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeal. And I think, ultimately, the U.S. Supreme Court will hear it. Again, it's being challenged on grounds that it is a gerrymandered district, and the U.S. Supreme Court will decide if that's the case. Well, that's what makes it confusing, because they were asked to draw a map specifically to make another minority majority district and then they come back and say oh it's racially gerrymandered where do you come to a consensus on this i don't that's the point i do not know if it with anyone outside of a court will come to a consensus i the the court said no we'll go ahead and run the election have your election and it, we have to keep in mind it this is an enormous sprawling district it starts out in baton rouge goes to lafayette comes up to alexandria and over to shreveport getting a, a largely minority population and it, it, those are very diverse economic interests, different kinds of people uh, also. So whoever is elected is gonna have to really spend a lot of time on the road getting to know this new district, at least for a one, two year term. And then they may not have a chance in two years. They may not. And if, if, you, if you had to say who, who a favorite might be, I probably would be former Congressman, former state Senator, former been in Louisiana government for 40 years, Cleo Fields, simply because of a standpoint of name ID. I think he, and he in the 1990s, represented a huge Z district, which went all over the state of Louisiana, and ultimately after one term was thrown out. Yeah, and so Cleo Fields, if, if he were to win as a Democrat, there's four Democrats in that race, one Republican. If a Democrat wins, it could have some serious implications when it comes to majorities in the House of Representatives. It could. I think. If everything I have seen is true, I, I think the Republicans will hold the House and actually expand their majority a little bit. So I don't think it will come down to this one seat, but numerically, you're exactly right. 
what do you think so you think the Republicans are going to hold on to the majority there? I do. I think Speaker Johnson will remain Speaker, and instead of having a tiny margin of three, I think it, we, the Republicans could pick up maybe 10 seats, maybe get, get to the 10 or 15 vote margin. If he was to lose the majority, what would be his role in the House? Uh, knowing Congressman Johnson, knowing Mike as I do, I know he would still want to stay active. He would probably go back to... I think before being Speaker, he would have always been happy to be Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Now, in the minority, he would be the minority leader of Judiciary. I still think Mike would see a role for himself in the U.S. House of Representatives, so maybe it's Judiciary, maybe it would be on armed services, protecting bases like Barksdale, um, something like that. I want to go back to the map real quick. So if it is changed again, is there any way to have it represent just a a more isolated area where it's not Shreveport to Baton Rouge? It, it should be. I think if it gets thrown out and it has to be re redrawn, it's going to have to be more. Co and, and the U.S. Supreme Court, to its credit in its redistricting cases, hasn't said we're going to hold it up under a microscope. They're just saying it's got to be roughly compact, roughly contiguous. I mean, Baton Rouge has a manufacturing base, for example, with those chemical plants along the river. Lafayette is just its own culture. North Louisiana, we're, we're oil and gas and, and agriculture. It, it's, we're 250 miles from Baton Rouge. That's just a lot to take into account in the way of representing a congressional district, a lot of different interests. If you're from Louisiana, you know it's a lot different. It so, is. Absolutely. Roy Alexander, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. We appreciate it. And many of you have already cast your ballots for the November 5th election. Louisiana had a record-breaking year for early voting. Here's a look at the numbers. In total, about 960,000 people voted early in Louisiana, either in person or by mail-in. That's nearly 85,000 more than 2020. Here's a breakdown of this year's numbers. 345,000 registered Democrats voted early, along with nearly 431,000 registered Republicans. At least 185,000 registered third party members voted early this year as well. Now it's soon time for the rest of you to head out to the polls and make your voices heard on who gets your vote. We'll have full election coverage right here on Tuesday, November 5th for election night. We also have all of our interviews with the candidates on KSLA.com. Thanks for watching Who Gets Your Vote. I'm Stephen Maxwell.